Russia, the absolute largest country on earth, is a mixture of over 170 nationalities and cultures that live in a land that's larger than the surface of the moon. To manage such a large territory, the country is divided into dozens of federal subjects. We've already covered all of the republics, check out this playlist to explore them all. Today, we're moving on to the second federal city of Russia, St. Petersburg. Hello, and welcome to 7 Facts. Russia's second largest city and its former capital is the wonderful St. Petersburg. The city is the crown jewel of Russia, a magnificent place full of breathtakingly beautiful architecture. It's probably the most visited city of the Federation, but it isn't just a plain old city. It's in fact a federal subject, meaning it has its own parliament and government. 5.3 million people live in St. Petersburg, which is also the northernmost metropolis in the world. Did I get your attention? Good, cause there's a lot more to talk about. St. Petersburg sounds familiar, right? But you don't quite know where to put it. Well, does Leningrad sound more familiar? Cause this is the place. St. Petersburg was founded by Tsar Peter the Great in 1702 in place of a smaller Finnic town, Nien. Despite what you might think, he didn't allegedly name the city after himself. It is named after St. Peter the Apostle. In fact, the city started out as the Peter and Paul Fortress. After the outbreak of World War I, due to a general anti-German sentiment, St. Petersburg was renamed Petrograd to remove the German words Sankt and Burg. As we all know, by the end of World War I, the Russian Empire fell and the Bolsheviks took over and established the Soviet Union. As such, the rebranded city of Petrograd was once again rebranded after Russia's new communist Tsar, Vladimir Lenin. This is how, up until 1991, the city became worldwide known as Leningrad. Peter the Great was a Tsar that made great strides to westernize his country. Building St. Petersburg was part of his plan. Interested in seafaring and maritime affairs, Peter wanted Russia to gain a proper major seaport to trade with the rest of Europe. He built the city with conscripted peasants and Swedish prisoners of war. Tens of thousands of them died during the construction. Ten years after its founding, the city became Russia's new imperial capital. This is why St. Petersburg sparks in splendor. Most of the old town contains marvelous imposing buildings, akin to those found in other imperial cities of Europe. For the next centuries, this was the seat of the Tsars and their imperial courts, of the government and of the most powerful noblemen of the empire. All of this came to an abrupt end after the communist revolution of 1917. The famous October Revolution took place here, when Bolshevik troops stormed the Winter Palace and overthrew the government. Although this event was greatly exaggerated. Once the communists took over, St. Petersburg's history as the capital of Russia ended. Before we get to the next fact, I'd like to ask you one thing. This video isn't sponsored, so perhaps you'd consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. If you still enjoy my content, go visit my Patreon page and help this channel out. Right, with that said, let's go to fact number 4. The Winter Palace is St. Petersburg's most famous landmark. This was the official residence of the Russian emperors from 1732 to 1917. It was constructed on a monumental scale that was intended to reflect the might and power of Imperial Russia. This building represents an important part of Russian history. In 1905, the infamous Bloody Sunday occurred when unarmed demonstrators were fired upon by royal troops, an event that sparked the 1905 revolution and was called upon in the 1917 revolution. The second revolution was the moment when the Bolsheviks forcefully took over the government. Although this event was greatly exaggerated by the communist government, it was in fact a very weak and clumsy coup d'etat and it only succeeded because the provisional government was even weaker. Nevertheless, the Winter Palace became an ironic symbol of both Tsarist Russia and the birth of the Soviet Union. 
Nowadays, the Winter Palace, along with five other historic buildings, are home to the Hermitage Museum. If you haven't heard of this place, where have you been living? This is the second largest art museum in the world, after the Louvre. It was founded in 1764 by Catherine the Great, so it's also one of the oldest such museums. Its collections, of which only a small part is on permanent display, comprise over 3 million items, including the largest collection of paintings in the world. If you would decide to spend just one minute per exhibit and allow yourself about 12 hours of rest each day, you would still spend over 12 years in this museum. Quite literally, there's no one who has seen all of this museum's colossal collection. I bet you didn't know that St. Petersburg is nicknamed the Venice of the North. And it really is. Think Venice, but on an imperial scale. Built across the marshlands of the Neva River Delta, St. Petersburg is interlaced with around 100 tributaries and canals, with a total length of 300 kilometers and over 800 bridges crossing them. It is actually quite difficult not to find yourself meandering along the canals and zigzagging over some of the bridges. The splendor of the monumental buildings can be admired from these canals, cause just like in Venice, there are boat rides available for everyone. The canals are also, like in the past, vital for the city's economy. Many are still used to ship goods from all over Russia to the rest of the world. There's one tragic episode in St. Petersburg's history that we can't overlook. The Siege of Leningrad. This was a prolonged military blockade undertaken by Nazi Germany, but it became much more than that. For two years, four months, two weeks and five days, Leningrad was completely cut off from the rest of the world, and most importantly, from supplies. This military blockade became one of the longest and most destructive sieges in history, and the costliest in casualties suffered. Some historians classify it as a full-blown genocide. The 872 days of the siege caused extreme famine in the Leningrad region through disruption of utilities, water, energy and food supplies. 1.5 million people died and another 1.4 million evacuated. These are the chilling results of the siege. People resorted to eating pets, birds, and then rats, and eventually sawdust. Cannibalism also occurred during those terrifying years. With winter temperatures dropping to below minus 30 degrees Celsius, the number of deaths peaked at 100,000 people per month. This was the most lethal siege in world history. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.